In December of 1965, North America Aviation was tasked by NASA to come up with a bold rescue plan to save astronauts from the moon. Houston, we have a problem. This is their plan. By the middle of the 1960s, moon fever was in full swing. The first US astronaut had reached orbit by 1962 and NASA's budget had gone from 400 million in 1960 to a colossal 5 billion by 1965. NASA was hiring contractors left, right and center and building a slew of infrastructure across the continent. As part of the preparation for the moon missions in 1969, NASA asked North America Aviation if they would come up with a mission to rescue the astronauts from the moon if anything were to go wrong. Deadly lunar ash swallows noted scientists. Flaming meteors attack. We must fashion a powerful atom bomb and drop the bomb into the crater. Some of the scenarios that they planned for were if astronauts were trapped in lunar orbit and had no way to get home. The original North America aviation plans dictated a spare Saturn V launcher, which was being prepared to launch for the following Apollo mission, would be ready for a rescue mission instead. On board, it would carry a single astronaut with a modified lunar command module that had several special features. For one, unlike the Apollo capsules, this module would be designed to carry four passengers. It would be able to fly all the way to the moon and then bring back four humans to Earth safely. The module would also have spacewalk technology, such as an umbilical cable and an airlock that could attach to both the lunar module and the lunar lander. These modifications and additions would add a total of 200 kilograms to the rescue module. The removal of science equipment and other unneeded systems would reduce the rescue module's mass by around 188 kilos for a net mass gain of only 13 kilograms. North America Aviation believed that they would need to build six Apollo rescue modules for the 20 planned Apollo missions. But this rescue plan was not as practical as it first appeared and had several problems. The first was that NASA planned on launching the rescue attempt as soon as they heard that the astronauts were trapped at the moon. But what if the launch site was facing away from the moon or that the orbital path didn't line up perfectly? In fact, launching too soon would significantly increase the risk that the rescue aircraft would be in flight for well over its 10-day limit, running out of oxygen and food on board, let alone if it would even get to the Apollo team in enough time. There were plenty of other risks as well. The fact that the lunar lander in the command module would only be able to keep two men alive for only one to two days. It would only be a few years later that NASA would plan an emergency way to keep astronauts alive in orbit for up to three weeks through sheer conservation of resources and emergency rations. Besides the risks of a one-man lunar rescue trip, all the problems associated with keeping a rescue command module, a Saturn V rocket, a launch pad, and a launch team all on standby made NASA reconsider the rescue plan for the Apollo missions. But our story doesn't end there. In 1969, a film got released by Hollywood called Marooned. The film was about a team of three astronauts stranded in Earth orbit. This actually spurred NASA into action to take a second look at their rescue plans. As it happens, during the Skylab Mission 3 in 1973, one of the thrusters developed leaks and it was feared that if onboard repairs failed, the astronauts would need to be rescued. An oxidizer leak in one of the quad thrusters was the only blemish on an otherwise perfect flight. The leak would mean a slight loss in attitude control on the return flight, but at this point, it appeared to be well within backup control capabilities. 
NASA dug up the original plans for the Apollo rescue missions and began to fit out a rescue command module into a Saturn V launcher. And astronauts Vance Brand and Don Lind began preparations to rescue astronauts Bean, Garrett and Lusma aboard the station. This new version of the rescue spacecraft would have seating for five instead of long-term life support systems. Its mission was to go into space and pluck the stranded crew out of orbit. Fortunately, they were able to solve the problems of the spacecraft without being rescued. The EVA lasted four and a half hours. All tasks were successfully performed. And the rescue craft was never used. When the space shuttle entered service in 1981, NASA put the rescue module into a warehouse for the next 30 years. In 2007, NASA began to design the next generation of orbital spacecraft, the Orion module, and looked back at successful spacecraft designs. But instead of basing it off the space shuttle, Skylab, Apollo, or any other missions, NASA actually pulled the rescue module out of storage 42 years later after it was built, and used it as a template for the next generation of spacecraft. If you enjoyed this video today, be sure to give it a like so the YouTube algorithm likes me. And subscribe if you want to hear my voice talk about more found and explained stories.